I'm not a doctor. I'm a reverend, but I'm not a doctor. I think titles are very important, but I am the uh, national president of the National Association of Media Literacy Education. Uh, I didn't realize before I stepped up here that I'm the first African American to be the national president of the National Association of Media Literacy Education. And the reason why I say that is because there should never be a first of anything for African Americans in 2015. As a matter of fact, I came into this because I saw that there were so few people working in the whole field of color who are focusing on media literacy education. And one thing that I recognize that as someone who teaches, uh, but also teaches in what I do, education is not just limited to the classroom. Uh, and I think that when we make the mistake of thinking that that's only where education is happening, because it's happening all around us and, and all through us. So I'm honored to be here. Great to be part of this particular uh, uh, gathering this evening. But I want to tell a, a personal story because I think it might frame things, particularly as it relates to images that we as African Americans, in particular African American men, have in hip hop and whether or not it's a friend or a foe as it relates to media. Uh, I go way back. Uh, I've, I've been, you know, talking about hip hop and looking at hip hop since the last poets. I mean, I, I grew up on a lot of different things, but I didn't really realize how much of a stereotype things were being shaped until I almost got arrested for doing something that was just normal. I used to park down on South Street here in Philadelphia because it was cheap and free. And I one time I parked a little bit too late, came back, somebody was in my car trying to steal it. I walked up on him and I said, look, brother, you know, we can't do this. And long story short, he stepped away, let me get in my car, but he didn't do so until he stripped back the steering column from my car. And so it was exposed. So, you know, and I, at the time, this goes back a little ways. I was driving a little Hyundai, nothing big, you know, but it was somebody else's. Somebody wanted to steal this little Hyundai. And I didn't get a chance to fix it until, you know, a couple of days later. However, one of my favorite groups of all time is Public Enemy. Mm -hmm. And the next day happened to be the time when I was happened to be driving down South Street in my own car, dressed a little bit similar to this. And I was playing one of my favorite songs from the field of Black Planet, which happened to be Brothers Gonna Work It Out. Now, it's a pretty, if you're not familiar with it, it's a pretty nice and loud, and it's, it's a beautiful day. My son was up, and I'm driving my car. The steering wheel is exposed. That's very important. But I'm dressed like this, driving up South Street with the sun up, beautiful. All of a sudden, somebody behind me, two police officers, pull up behind me. And I'm thinking, they're trying to get to somebody else because they're not doing anything <laughs> wrong, anything illegal. So I pull to the side. As I pull to the side, they pull to the side. As I stop, figure maybe I ran a light or a stop sign or something like that, they both got out, pulled out their Glocks, came up on both sides of the car to stop me, to ask me to freeze. Now, if anybody has never had a Glock pulled on, then the last thing you mm -hmm. want to do is freeze because you're not sure what you're going to do. Because I'm not sure what they're going to do. So at the time, my music kept playing because I was not going to move. I was trying to follow orders. So right after Fear of a Black Planet and after Brothers Going to Work It Out, there's some really hard stuff that keeps playing. <laughs> and the more I was trying to answer their questions about this is my car, the more hype they got. And so I was following directions, gave my ID, gave my registration, and eventually said, well, we are Sorry, obviously this is your car. And after I calmed down, because I was petrified, I just knew that this was just going to be it, I asked them, I said, well, what was that all about? And they said, sir, I'm sorry, this was standard operating procedure. So the fact that I happen to be of the color that I am and of the gender that I am and in the music that I'm playing in a car that I'm, and, and, and again, the steering wheel might have been stripped, but do you think that I was gonna be driving around a Hyundai when the sun is up, when, that I'm gonna somehow break forth and kinda challenge this media image? Now that happened a while ago, but unfortunately, that's happening just as we sit here. It always amazes me when I, ever, I tell somebody that, oh yes, I've been stopped by the police, really. Well, it's usually people who don't look like me who have that reaction. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so dedicated to trying to help media literacy education to happen. Because the media literacy education is how we critically analyze, how we critically consume, how we critically form media that shapes who we are and what we do. 
Now, in a society when that is very much the case, we have a responsibility, whether we're educators in a formal sense or educators in an informal sense, to be discerning, to be discriminating, to be creative about how we focus and direct media that is trying to define us. Now that we've kind of democratized communications, that you can have a communication by simply having a smartphone, that has become the great equalizer. So ha as we create images and consume images, it becomes critically more important for us to make sure that we do so with responsibility, with creativity, but most importantly, with authenticity. Because if we're not authentic, then our messages don't matter. So I thank you for the opportunity to get this started. I can't wait to join this conversation because it's, it's, it's a rare opportunity, I think, to have brothers who are all together talking about the images that shape us we can produce this, but we've got to be smart about how we consume this. So thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Project Steam TV. We are here with the amazing Councilwoman Blondo Reynolds. How are you doing today? I feel very, very good. I'm always thrilled to get in front of young people. They energize me. I see. She actually just opened up our first segment. How did it feel talking and presenting to, on our first segment to the young people? Well, first are always very, very special. So the invitation to be a part of your launch will be very, very special to me forever. And the work you're doing is important. It's really getting our young people ready for the future. Science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. It's real simple. And so Project STEAM is getting our young people ready, arming them with the information they need so that they can compete in a global economy, right? Now, Charles Gregory, as yes. you know, he has really been just like, she's coming, she's coming, and he has just been so excited about the citation. Share with everyone about the citation. It'd be a pleasure. So City Council has a wonderful practice where we like to celebrate and lift up first celebrate and lift up extraordinary experiences, celebrate and lift up amazing, remarkable milestones. And so with Project STEAM fits all of those criteria. And so we're, we were thrilled when Charles Gregory approached me, my office, and uh, Salima Suswell to explore how we could support you. Uh, citations are wonderful documents because they celebrate, lift up major milestones, celebrate and lift up some remarkable experience that's happening. Project STEAM is remarkable. This is a first, so it's a milestone, and we're going to be supportive for the long term because it focuses on getting our young people ready to compete in a global economy. Well, we thank you so much for taking out the time. Thank you for the citation, and enjoy your evening. Thank you very, very much. Kudos and congratulations to Project STEAM. Let's be here five years from now, 10 years from now, 25 years from now.